Let's talk about this. We got this story from The Guardian. Let's pull this up. Sound of Freedom passed the $100 million mark. Who's really watching the movie? They say the QAnon adjacent film co-opted by the right wing has a pay it forward scheme resulting in sold out shows, but empty theaters. That is a lie. It's their a evidence, flat out lie. Their evidence is that they went to a local theater. Check out the weasel language they use here. According to Fandango, all but 28 seats had been sold for the 3 p.m. screening of Sound of Freedom. As the lights dimmed, however, the Guardian counted 45 vacant seats dotted around the half-empty theater. Full stop. <laughs> the lights dimmed twice. When a movie ends, the lights go full brightness. Then the lights will dim slightly for pre, like the, the, the movie go, whatever it's called, pre-screener, where yeah. it's like, you know, lasers and you hold up your phone and stuff. Then it dims, th then the lights shut off. My question is, are they lying by manipulating, so uh, being factual but not truthful, in that when the lights dimmed, half the theater was empty. Are you saying that people showed up early for the movie and then when the lights dimmed for the previews, the theater was half empty? Or are you saying... When the lights actually dimmed for the start of the film, the theater was empty. Check this out. He says, minutes before the 6.30 screening, Fandango showed that only two seats were available. Again, there were more than two vacant spots as the film began. Three? Wow. That's, what does more than two mean? Well, yeah. that's empty. More than two definitely means it's not a sellout. No one is there. <laughs> it sounds it like <laughs> what actually happened was the theater was half full that's... before the previews even started. Right. Mm -hmm. The lights dim. And they're like, theater's half empty. Yeah. Then before the movie actually starts, there's like six seats that are available. And they're like, more than two? More. Some people didn't show up? Yeah, some people missed their movie. Well, take a look at this. Currently, Sound of Freedom's at 124 million. One was Obama's chef. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, number three, only behind Barbie and Oppenheimer. Of course, those are the big movies that just came out. Sound of Freedom is beating Mission Impossible. That's yeah. Amazing. Sorry, Tom Cruise. Take that. Beating Mission Impossible. You know, The Flash is considered the biggest one of the if, uh, it, it may be the biggest box office bomb in history. Wow. Did it just come it's, out? It's odd yeah. when you take somebody who kidnaps women and tortures them and then you're like, you can still be The Flash. Oh, Ezra. yeah. What's that guy's? Oh, I was, Ezra Miller. Ezra, look, yeah. They made back like 260 of their 400 million. So they were like, we can't cancel this film. I'll, look, I'll take 50 cents on the dollar, but I'm not, taking, I'm not taking zero. Yeah. I really like Michael Shannon, too. I feel bad that he's got to take a hit on that one. Yeah. yeah. Who is he in the movie? Uh, I guess he's the bad guy. I don't know who oh. he plays, but. I wonder how many of the people involved with The Flash are making money off of it. Like when 240 million comes in of your 400, does the production house eat it? And they're like, sorry, BlackRock. ESG, we'll, we'll pay it forward. Yeah. We'll donate to some kids in Rwanda or something. I also feel that with superhero movies it's like it's fine we'll just make it all back with every other superhero movie we make this year yeah don't worry about I it i assume it's not like per movie there's an ultimate you know bottom yeah. line and even that it's like yeah we lost a couple hundred million but we still made back a few hundred million so it's not like the end of the world for these studios okay no i i mean i think i th think it's about netflix right now netflix had a bunch of um like house related flipping shows that are all netflix originals like that they're like you're looking at these these things and you're like how much is the budget per episode here but it's because ultimately netflix is trying to decide which style of show people are going to watch which they'll renew they're able to throw up a ton of losses if they can ultimately decide it's worth it as a business investment because they are making money off of other things yeah did you, did you know there was a movie called ruby gilman teenage kraken that came out no i'm just like looking at the box office oh, like, oh wait this is the one where there's like yes, a mermaid who's yeah. green it was like I a month did. and a half ago, I guess. My, that yeah. one must be doing very bad. Terrifier, the, the Blackening, oh, the Boogeyman. The Blackening, I wanted to see. What is it? It's like a horror movie, but it's uh, it's by the people that did um, Get Out. Oh no, not Get Out. But yeah, I see, I see what you did. I don't know. I, I know, know anything about movies. Did. No, no, they did. Um, they did a parody too of another. Uh, it is like parodies of black movies. Oh. Um, but this one is yeah. They all go to a camp or go to a house in the woods. So it is like all black people in a house in the woods horror movie. The huh. the tagline is "We can't all die first. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I well, do want to see that one actually. The big the big news is meet we're, the blacks. We're, uh, the people. It's, uh, we're nearly invited. twenty or twenty days on. Nearly about three weeks on. Sound of Freedom uh, in, on Saturday hit $7.5 million, beating, uh, I'm sorry, on Friday they beat Mission Impossible by 200K, about 140K. They lost Sunday by about 400K, but then uh, uh, almost uh, $700,000 Sound of Freedom beats Mission Impossible on Sunday. The crazy thing is, Sound of Freedom has consistently been hitting millions every day 
Saturday, July 15th, $10 million. Friday, $7 million. This is amazing. So here's what I want to say about The Guardian. They're trying to make it seem like suspicious sales. The theaters are empty, but they're claiming they saw it. And I'm like... There were two seats with people that they weren't even in them. If you think you're going to go to Hollywood Studios and say, don't support these movies, people are willing to pay to see it and not actually even go to the theater. The studio is going to be like, wait, wait, hold, hold on. People are giving money in exchange for nothing? They're just like literally giving their money away? Can we make more of these? It's even, why, why would a studio say no to that? Yeah, or a movie house because well, it's less upkeep on the house to have to clean after exactly, the Exactly, yeah. Showing. It will have to be like, well, there are morality tales and the guy at the studio is like, oh, I work for the devil. <laughs> yeah. Is there a way to do this There's where- a slight con for me <laughs> Where here. we're evil. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I can't make these at all. It's kind of even our contract. I just, ah. I, I love how their smear is- this movie was so important that people are paying for tickets but not actually going. As if that's yeah. going to, like, discredit it in any way. Yeah. It's the most, ca it's a capitalist dream. You mean I can bake the cake and keep it? And you're going to pay me money anyway? Just, yeah. That's amazing. And, and, and you know this semi-feminist uh, Barbie movie is not able to say the same thing. Like, our movie is so culturally important. Please buy tickets for other people. People you may not even know. <laughs> like, where is the Barbie go buy tickets for other people campaign? It doesn't exist because that movie obviously doesn't tell a story that people want to hear or feel uh, a moral imperative to share with other people. That's what's one of the things that's so unique about Sound of Freedom. You just can't replicate that everywhere. Well, no, and it's a it's very important for people to see. I mean, I have a son. Right after I saw it, he was yelling. Br he was wearing bright yellow for the next three days because it's haunting. I mean, it really is a terrible story, and it's it's very real. I I think it's odd that it's taken this long for people to kind of open their eyes in this way to human trafficking because it's everywhere and it's been everywhere in plain sight for a very very long time. But at least it's finally out there and people are getting to be a little bit more aware of it. But it it. It's important, and it's important that these tickets are available for people because a lot of it is just for people who can't afford to go to the movies. That's why people are buying them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can just go out and see it. Yeah, it matters. And that's not Barbie. It's like you've made 800 Barbies now for everybody where you have like handicapped wheelchair Barbie, you have spina bifida Barbie, you have all these things, but then you make the movie and it's just hot ass Barbie. He's not joking, ladies but, and gentlemen. No, I'm yeah, serious. Why didn't Lizzo play Barbie? I, I was shocked she didn't. But date but like, no, like for real though. No, I, I they were like they would. That's why everyone tried claiming Margot Robbie was unattractive. Mm -hmm. Which, because the reality it's was a lie. That's a lie. Oh, I, I know. Lie she's she's face. conventional Hollywood attractive. <laughs> yeah, like sorry. what? She's like the conventional Hollywood beautiful actress. Yes. But they have to say that because then people are going to come. Up, oh, why wouldn't Barbie? It's a feminist film. Why didn't they cast Lizzo mm -hmm. or a trans woman? Yeah, that's true. That's why I don't even look at the cover of Sports Illustrated because I don't know anymore. Yeah. Well, the reality is their ideology is, it's, it's, it's nonsense. It is. You know, here, here's the funny thing. Remember the movie Bros? You know that one? Yeah, I know that oh, one. Oh, Billy, the, Billy the, Eichner's. The gay comedy one? Yeah. Okay. No, it bombed. Miserably. It nobody was like one of the worst, yeah. Bombs. Com yeah. And he's, he's at this show and he's walking through the aisle being like, everybody, please go see this movie. You have to. Nobody wanted to pay a dime for it. Especially gay men. It, but I mean, look, maybe they did want to see it. I don't know. I'm just saying. At least the ones if, I knew were like, no. But if you're talking to 3% or like 0.1% one, 1 of the population, your market cap is going to be 1% of typical box office market cap. If you make a movie that's like called All Men Are Dumb, don't expect men to go see it. If you make a yeah. movie about a gay relationship, don't expect straight people to go see it. Well, they didn't. Here's the thing. Sound of Freedom is the inverse of that. People on the right post-liberals, people who care about this issue, they want the movie so badly, they're willing to pay extra for other people to go see it. Yeah, it's like information. Like, you're actually going to see, to learn some information. It is a doc, it's a drama about a real-life story, but you're still learning, like, about real life things mm -hmm. so it's like it's like a documentary and sadly you're time. getting clips of the real life events yeah literally yeah and that's that's horrifying but when you see it you realize how you know how fast it can happen yep and how you know little people can do about it because you have grown men with guns who pull up to kids playing soccer or whatever on the street and what are they going to do they're just trying to save whatever kids are just sitting there. And then you have, and then who, what are the most egregious places where human trafficking happens? They go right to Los Angeles. It's one of the top three. I, I also want to point this out too. In the Guardian story, it says, in a theater located in New York City's Times Square on Thursday afternoon, there seemed to be evidence of this. Whoa, 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 whoa. You mean to tell me 
that a Thursday afternoon they sold half the theater out? I don't buy it. What? No, no. A Thursday that's, at that's three p.m. To me. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we always go. Who goes to a three p.m. Thursday showing? The if you even look at the Sound of Freedom box office, it's big days are weekends. Duh. This is why movies get released with Thursday previews on, over weekends. So you're saying two weeks out, almost three weeks out on a Thursday, they were able to put fill up half the theater. Yeah. Come on. Well, it looks like they filled up almost the entire theater by the time the right. movie started. No, no, yep. but two seats. We, what are you talking All about? All but two, at least <laughs> two <laughs> seats. No, no, that's, it's that's not more than two. That means three. Do you think there were tourists on a Tuesday afternoon in Times Square? I mean, that's my guess. Yeah. Maybe, but what I find fascinating is the the fact that they're not acknowledging that you could go to any movie and be like one of two people in the theater and they still consider that movie a success, right? This this idea that they're not filling they're not selling out every single show every single time but they're still making tons of money is irrelevant to them they they're manipulating all of their data to try to make this look bad it's the same thing with this like qAnon slur right like they have just decided this might be the way to scare people away from going right to say like actually that many people aren't seeing it you're you're confused because actually not every seat is sold and we checked this one time like it's it's ridiculous. Well, it's interesting because it's the only place in Times Square that you're not spending money on human trafficking at that hour. That's a Man, good, that's a good no, one. it's true. I'm just saying it's a creepy place. I lived in Watch New York your for a while. You do, yeah. There's a, really, and then well, mm-hmm. of course, if you eat, don't finish your Red Lobster. You can just set it on a homeless guy's tent because that seems like a good idea. Yeah. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.